Matt Ritchie, I take it all back. Matt Ritchie, the man who the fans are singing is going to stay 10 more years. I take it all back. Give him the new deal. Matt Ritchie comes on and saves Newcastle's blushes in the game today. Um, in all seriousness, no, this is the instant reaction as Newcastle draw 2-2 against Bournemouth. Richie coming on, scoring the goal, kicking the corner flag, gave a little bit of something to end that game. Um, but I spent a lot of time at the end of the game thinking, you know, what went wrong? What what, what was wrong? And, and to be honest, I think I'll be better off starting off with what did we do right in that game? Richie scoring, scoring came on, that was a plus, you know, came onto the pitch with not a lot of applause or reaction from the fans, to be honest, but comes on, does his job, sticks it in the net and, you know, really St. James's Park was as loud as it had been all afternoon for that final eight, eight, nine minutes of extra time in the hope that we could nab a win and try and take three points. But it's another side at St. James's Park, like Luton was not so long ago, like Nottingham Forest was not so long ago, where we've lost against a side who, you know, a team battling relegation. You know, we were a side who, who are still in a shout for European football. And look, we drew... It's better than a loss. There is some positives to take there, but you know, I was a bit flat going in. No one really knew what to expect. It was it was a it was a kind of a situation where we really should be going in and winning a few goals. There, I've spoke to a few lads before the game going three four nil. I'm going. I don't think it's going to be that easy, and it and it proved not to be. Um, another big plus today was Lewis Miley. Amazing quality. Um, made some really good tackles. His passing range was fantastic. You know, there's. As I say, I'm cherry picking some of the, the better points from today. But really to sit in the stadium and go, you know, what have we done right? You know, that's not it should be, you know, what went wrong. And it just felt like everything went wrong. To be honest, there was we had no striker. Look, I think that showed throughout the game that we didn't have a striker. I would go as far to say as, you know, you know, rose tinted goggles and all that. You know, at half time I thought hey, we were okay. You know, there's moments in that game where we had plenty of chances, you know. Um, you know, Miggy had some some moments. Um, Gordon had the header that came across the box. He just nutted it past the goal. If that was Wilson, I think we're one 0 up. You know, if we had a striker on the pitch, I think it changes the dynamic of how we play. You know, having Gordon in the middle is almost like losing out on Gordon because like Gordon's way better when he plays out on the wing, which Barnes was doing. We tried to remedy that later on when we brought Murphy on and put him down the middle. We tried Barnes down the middle. We're trying to play a game without a striker. I think it definitely showed throughout that game. But to continue on to more points, I thought, you know, they were cutting through us like like a, a hot knife through butter, really. And, and that's not just this game. That was the game against Nottingham Forest away. That was the 4-4 against Luton. That was, you know, Luton at home. You know, there's been loads of examples of where our midfield are just not functioning, not quite kicking clicking, not quite working together. I think Bruno, as a singular individual, had a pretty decent game of day. He was nutmegging people in our, own, in our own box at the end. I thought his range of passing was great. I thought, as I said, I've mentioned Miley already, really, really good. But we weren't controlling the game. You know, we weren't in control of that game at home. And again, no offence, Bour Bournemouth have taken four points from us. You know, big at Bournemouth. You know, there wasn't loads of away fans, but they've come here and they've probably been gutted that they didn't win it in the end. You know, again, Slanky, you know, we had seven, eight, nine chances in the first half, but none of them were clear cut. They were all just here, just there. Big up Dubravka for the saves that he did make in the first half. My word, two, like, literally out of this world saves. Bournemouth sh probably should have been winning 2 0 at half time if it wasn't for Dubravka. And we're going at half time. And as I've said, we had the chances, but we weren't clicking. We weren't quite getting. The thing is, though, if we do score one of them goals, or we do score two of them goals, we start to ride the high, the confidence starts to flow. No no striker, no worries. And we, I think we go on and win, but, but we didn't. And, and I think we, 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 we need that too often. We need that if we don't, like, it's almost like we have to score to like take the, because we're not in control and because we're not covering the game and because there's, there's this, this little, you no know, defensively we, we weren't great. And I know Dan Burnley will get some stick for the goals that we'll quickly run through in a moment. Um, so will Dubravka, but I don't think Botman was necessarily at his best. I think Shaw looked injured come the end of the game. You know, there was loads of stuff going on, and, and, and you, you bring it back to, you know, injuries, not full squad. We've got no strength. There's, there's, there's loads. 
You know what I mean? As I say, at the end of that game, I'm sitting around going, what, what have we, what's gone wrong today? As I say, it's easier to go what went right because I just think there were so many things just wrong in the game. I think Eddie House, I, I, once again, I'm not going to put it on Dan Byrne, but, you know, and I would go as far as, I would go as far as the whole defence. Yes, the goal, both goals came from that left-hand side, but every time Bournemouth were through, every time one through ball puts them through, we've spoken about the number six, we've spoken about a lot of things. I think that's partly why the midfield isn't clicking. Bournemouth are playing through balls and they're just, they're in. You know, <laughs> they're just in. Like, there's no, oh, hang on, where's it gone? And then there's a question of, is Dubravka going to come for it? Is he not going to come for it? There's so much going on there that Eddie Howe basically needs to sort out. They score a free goal where, to be honest, we've passed the ball into Dubravka. He slipped over and he puts it in the back of the net. As previous to that, the first two saves Dubravka made in the first half were out of this world. And he slipped over and he's going to get a stick for slipping over. And he will get some blame for it. But we know Dubravka's not great on the ball. We've just we've, we've passed a ball like it wasn't an easy pass. It wasn't a nice little p roller. We've, we've hammered the ball into him. He's trying to take a touch. Solanke's two yards away from him. Why are we even giving it? Should the Bravka have just lumped it straight away? Yes, but why are we giving it to him anyway? Leave the Bravka alone. Stop passing the ball to the Bravka. Leave the poor bloke alone. The ball goes the other end. I, I said what was good this game. Richie was good. Miley was good. But. Oh. The ref wasn't good. How have, I, how have I got this far in the video and not mentioned The referee was terrible. I think possibly the worst first half of officiating I've seen in a long time. The amount of cynical fouls they were putting up on our players that didn't get given was insane. They were kicking us all over. The ref did not want to give a yellow card. Dreadful. Thankfully, however, VAR was on our side. Why? I don't know. From the, the, um, the videos I've seen... Um, Shaw got a little tug in the box and he went down and fairness we've seen that happen to us recently as well so maybe it was our turn to get a bit of VAR luck which took ages by the way for him to get given in the, in the stadium for about 8-9 minutes with no idea what was going on penalty given Gordon scores it 1-1 one, one, we're back in business oh hang on we're not because a ball has literally got put through through the middle of the midfield through the middle of our, through the left hand side of our defence shot across the box and despite the fantastic saves the Bravka made in the first half just got nowhere near it and it goes in the back of the net really easy really simple really rubbish from us um, and as I say at that point the, the crowd was flat I felt the team were flat there was no pump until Matt Ritchie came on. <laughs> Matt, Matt Ritchie, I take it all back. Keep Matt Ritchie. The crowd sing Matt Ritchie 10 more years. You know, all jokes aside, I'm happy for Ritchie that he came on and scored. But I would also say that that should not be Newcastle's plan B. You know, we're bringing on Livermento for Dan Byrne after they've scored to make it 2-1. We should be making those kind of substitutions before that to try and take something from the game, not after it's already lost and we're trying to save the game. Really, Matt Ritchie coming on is just like a token, let's save some legs. I don't think the... You know, if Eddie has a plan is to bring Matt Ritchie on to score the winner or the equaliser every game, I think we need to take another look at our game plan. So, there you go. You know, we'll talk about the season and what else we want to go for this season. People say, you know, there's the FA Cup, but league-wise, what the hell's going on? You know, when we talk about our chance to try and get European football and the games we've had of late, it's just, you know, I think sucking the air out of it a little bit. And now we go to Arsenal away next weekend, who have just thumped whoever they were playing today. Let me know your thoughts on the game down below. Thank you for watching. As always, if you're not subscribed to the channel and you've watched this far through the video, be sure to do so. Loads of Newcastle content, as always. It's raining. I'm sad. I'm going to go to the pub. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you later.